Hey guys, welcome back to Crafts Go Bloom. My name is Krista, and today I've got another crochet tutorial for you. This is going to be for a no sew cat. Our tutorial today is for a no sew cat, and I've got it in a few different options here. As you can see, we've got different color options, different yarns, make it turn out in slightly different sizes. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, the gray one here is what we're going to be making today, and it just has a little nose and ears, but on the orangish one here I added some whiskers, and on the blue one I added whiskers and stripes along the back, so you'll be able to customize it however you would like it to look, or if you are trying to make a cat that looks like a certain cat that you love. I'm going to be using Big Twist Cuddle in the color medium gray for this cat. Some other things that we're going to need today are extra yarn for the nose and ears or any stripes that you might want to do, and those colors are up to you. This is a mauve pink color from a skein of Bernat Ogo. Any pair of scissors that you have, as long as they're sharp, a tapestry needle, safety eyes, and a crochet hook. And I am using a 6.5 millimeter hook today. I've got my 6.5 millimeter hook or a K hook if you use the lettering system, and my yarn. And we are going to get started on this cat. Now for round one, we need to single crochet six into a magic ring or a magic circle. And to make the magic ring, we're going to lay the yarn across my hand. I'm gonna pinch it with my thumb, wrap it around those three fingers and pinch that X, pull it across the back of my hand and wrap it around my pinky. I'll show you that one more time. So we're going to wrap it around the three fingers, grab it with your thumb, pinch that X, wrap around again, and grab it with your pinky. And then we're going to take our crochet hook, go under the first loop, and pull the second loop, twisting it and pushing it up on our hook a little bit. And then we're going to grab the yarn from our pinky and pull it through that loop. And we need to do six single crochets into our magic ring. Now the way you do a single crochet is by inserting your hook into the desired stitch. And for us right now, that is this big hole inside of the magic ring. So we're going to insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that is a single crochet. And you can do that same exact stitch. We're going to do that later on in this project and it will work the same way, it just won't be worked into a ring. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in our magic ring. To close this up, I'm going to pull out my hook and pull on this tail while holding on to our stitches so that we don't, don't drop anything. I pull this pretty tight, but I'm not trying to pull it so tight that I break the yarn. Let me just move that tail out of our way. And we're going to move on to round two. For round two, we're going to increase in every stitch, which means we're going to do two single crochets into every one single crochet from the first round. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the two loops that we're going to go into. And we are going to do two single crochets. One, two. And it's just like when we went into the magic ring, when we make a single crochet, we're going to insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull it through two loops. Now we have three and four. Keep going around until you have 12. All right, you should have 12 stitches around this circle. And for round three, we're going to 
increase and then single crochet one six times for a total of 18 stitches. So an increase in the first stitch, you're going to get one, two in the same stitch, and then we're just going to single crochet one. And that's three, and then we're going to repeat that. Four, five, and six, all the way around until we have 18. All right, it is time to work on round four. We're going to increase and then single crochet two six times for a total of 24 stitches. So we're going to do one, two in the same stitch, and then three and four. We'll repeat that five, six, seven, and eight and keep going until you have 24 stitches. I finished round four and I have 24 stitches. I do not typically use a stitch marker unless my kids are around and I'm really having trouble keeping track of my stitches, but this may be where you want to use a stitch marker. In round five, we are going to single crochet 17. One, to now we're going to double crochet one triple crochet one and double crochet one all in the same stitch in the next stitch so for double crochet you're going to yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. For a triple crochet, you're going to yarn over twice, and we're going into the same stitch for this one. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two. And then we're going to do one more double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, go into the exact same stitch, Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And then we're going to single crochet in four stitches, the next four, one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to make that same ear again. So we're going to do a double crochet, triple crochet, and double crochet again, all in the next stitch. And then after that, we're going to do one single crochet in the back loop only and then we'll be done with this round. So for this last stitch of round five we are going to only single crochet in the back loop. We have this front loop here, back loop there. We're typically going through both of them but this time around we're only going to go through the back loop. So we're going to insert our hook there and single crochet one. That's the end of round five. Now for round six, we're going to single crochet 17 in the back loops only. So do 17 more of those and meet me back here. Once you've done your 17 single crochets in the back loops only, you're going to start to see this little bit of a ring pop out so that we have a little bit of definition uh, going on on his face under the, his chin. Now, the next thing we're going to do is single crochet one in the back bottom loop of the triple crochet from the previous round. So that is this stitch right here. And we're going to look on the back of it and try to find the bottom of it. This really does not need to be exact. As long as you're in the center and you're at the bottom, pick a loop and do a single crochet with that, just one. And then you're going to pick up and do your next single crochet in the back loops of these four stitches that are between the ears. So we have our double, triple, double. We're going to find that first single and go in the back loop only. And that's one, two, three, four. And that's going to close us up and make our ear stick out. We're going to do the exact same thing over here. We're going to find the bottom stitch of that triple. 
can be hard to get your hook in there sometimes, so it's okay to just pick that up and put it on your hook. And do that single crochet again in that back loop. And then we are going to do one single crochet past the ear, but this time we're going back into both loops. And that is the end of round six. For round seven, we're going to start making the feet and go all the way around. So first, we're going to single crochet five. We have one. And when we're done with those five single crochets, we're going to do a bobble stitch in the next stitch. For a bobble, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops on the hook. Yarn over again and repeat the process. And so now we've done that two times. We're going to do it three and four times. Then yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. Then we need to do three single crochets. Two, three, and then we're going to do another bobble stitch. So remember you yarn over and you're only going to pull through those first two loops on your hook and you're going to do that three times after that. We're actually going to do it four times. So we've done it one, two, three, four times and then we're going to pull through. And after you do that second bobble, we're going to single crochet 14 around and I will meet you back here. I am finished with round seven. Now for rounds eight and rounds nine, we're just going to single crochet 24 around. So do two more rounds of 24 stitches and I'll meet you back here and we'll get to work on the face. All right, I have finished rounds eight and nine. And before we move on to 10, now is a great time to put on the eyes, sew on the nose and the ears. Now I never sew on my faces after the project is closed up. I love to be able to put my needle in through the back and I love to be able to tie it off in the back and just leave those ends in there as extra stuffing instead of having to weave them back in. So the first thing we're going to do is get our safety eyes. If you've never used safety eyes before, this is what they look like. They have these little ridges on the back and then this is the back of it and this little plastic piece will just slip down over it and it will pop onto these ridges. Now these are in no way safe for a child that is still going to put a toy in their mouth. So you do not want to use these if you have a kid who is chewing on things still. Um, if you have a child that young, you're gonna want to do yarn eyes. And if we look over here at the example, I put the eyes in between rounds two and three and they're about two full stitches apart. They're also kind of straight down from the ears. Now, when you put the eyes on this cat before you put the nose on, um, it can look a little strange on this one. Once you get the nose in there, the eyes will look a little better, I promise. Okay, that looks a lot straighter to me. I moved this eye over a little bit. So you're going to put your thumbs on these eyes, push them to the back, and leave your thumb there to kind of hold it in place. Grab this backing, and these just pop on very easily. You put your thumb on the, on the eye, hold it in place, but don't push too hard. Put the backing on there and press that down. And this particular um, set of eyes that I have, these are nine millimeter, these go on very easily. I have some in other brands and sizes that don't work as well, but I really love these. And I just got these off Amazon. I threaded my tapestry needle with a scrap piece of this pink yarn that I chose. And we're going to sew on the nose first and then the ears. And I think that we can do this all with one piece of yarn. Okay. 
To finish off sewing the face, we're just going to turn this around and tie a knot on the inside with this pink, being sure that we don't pull too hard because we don't want to distort what we've done on the front. So for that first knot, I'm just loosely putting it up against the back of the fabric that we've created. And then for the second knot, I pull very tight. Be careful not to break your yarn when you pull on that. And I do a couple of knots just to be on the safe side and it's just gonna hide inside of our project. Moving on to round 10, we are going to single crochet six, one, and then we are going to make the back V. So we're going to bobble again. And then three single crochet. And then a bobble stitch again. And then you're going to single crochet 13 to finish out this round. And I'll meet you back here when I'm done with that. If for some reason your feet are not lining up, it is okay to do less single crochets before or after, or even in the middle if you need to, as long as you have an end count of 24 stitches in round 10 and your legs look like they are lining up. I have finished off round 10 and now for round 11, we're just going to single crochet 24 around again. I finished round 11 and now we're going to move on to round 12 and we're going to invisible decrease and then single crochet two six times for a total of 18 stitches. And to do an invisible decrease, we need to find the two loops of our single crochet. If you just insert your hook, you can find one in the front and one in the back. And we only want to go through the front loop of that stitch and then the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over and do a single crochet like you normally would. So we did our invisible decrease and then we're gonna do two more regular single crochets. And then we have three stitches, so now we're going to do another invisible and that gets us to four, five, and six. Keep repeating that pattern until you get to 18. Moving on to round 13, we are going to be doing an invisible decrease and then one single crochet six times for a total of 12 stitches at the end. So we're going to do that same invisible decrease that we did in the last round with only one stitch, one single crochet in between and then another invisible decrease and one single crochet again. So keep going until you have 12 stitches. Once you have the 12 stitches from round 13 complete, you can pull your working yarn out a little bit, take your hook out, and it is time to stuff the cat. We are almost done. Now that is one supply I did forget to mention. Um, which is stuffing and I use polyfill. I buy it in 32 ounce bags. That's just what I prefer and I'm going to stuff this as firmly as I can. I've added my stuffing and the reason I like to stuff them as firmly as I can without distorting the shape of the amigurumi is because I have three kids and they all love to just squish the life out of everything that they pick up and so I want it to be able to withstand a lot of squishing and a lot of loving. And so I've got that stuffed and now we need to move on to round 14, which is just six invisible decrease slip stitches. To do an invisible decrease slip stitch, we're going to pick up the two front loops that we're trying to decrease, yarn over, and we're just gonna pull through all three loops on the hook. And that's one. 
then we'll do it again just picking up those two front loops yarning over and pulling through all three loops on the hook and that's going to close up this tail but give us a flat ending because I don't want it to be pointed I don't want those stitches to stand up tall so do six of those and then we will finish the tail and do more stuffing along the way if you need it I finished up round 14 now for round 15 we're going to make the tail and uh, we it's not exactly a round we right now are going to start by chaining one two three four five and we're going to single crochet two in the second chain from the hook both going into the same stitch so we've got one two in the second chain from the hook now in the third chain from the hook we're going to do the same thing we're going to have two single crochets in there one two and then we're going to just do one single crochet in the next and one single crochet in the last chain and then we're going to slip stitch back into the spot that we started from and now we have a tail that curves up we are almost finished all we need to do now is finish off and weave in this end this is a pretty quick amigurumi project so i'm going to cut a long tail pull my yarn through now you're still probably going to have a little bit of a hole from the last round that we did and that's okay we're just going to sew through the loops of each stitch from that final round and then pull that closed there we go And then we just need to weave in our end I like to go out to a wider point and then I'm able to weave my tail in through a lot more stitches at one time when you're finished weaving in your tail Go ahead and cut that off and guys that's it we are finished with our cat we've got some little friends hanging out i really hope that you enjoyed making this cat with me and that you will consider subscribing and liking this video don't forget if you'd like the written pattern it will be in the link below for my etsy shop and you can check out all of my other patterns there i had a great time making this video and i hope i will see you in the next tutorial bye Thank mm -hmm. you.